There is a groundswell of grumbling from people who hire private security companies, wondering whether the service they get justifies the amount they pay every month. Some commentators, such as Chris Barron of South Africa, say this is justifiable skepticism, pointing out that research reveals that their money buys them little more than an illusion of protection. The private security industry has more than 2,000 companies and 30,000 officers. That is three times more than the entire Botswana police service. But the general feeling is that it has done very little to combat crime. Some say what security companies sell most of the time is the fear of crime and underperformance of the police, so customers continue to pay in spite of inadequate service. Johannesburg Community Safety Specialist Barbara Holtman says it is easy money from a captive market. She says the irony is that the more the industry fails its clients, the more those clients end up paying. Holtman is of the view that when clients get attacked, the security companies use it as an excuse to flog more products and services. She says what has happened over the years is that people have just escalated the amount of security that they have. The company will offer you CCTV or they will offer you guarding services. It is just one thing after another. All you end up doing is paying more. It is time to ask those in security whether this approach is helping. Does private security deter crime or have criminals simply become more aggressive, more organized, better armed and just do not care about private security guards? Tonight, First Issues hosts a security company owner and chairman of the Private Security Association of Botswana, Mr. Mudongo, as well as political and administration lecturer with the University of Botswana, Major General Mokware, to find out whether the proliferation of private security companies has changed behavior and reduced the risk of being attacked. Welcome. Welcome back to First Issues. As we seek to understand whether private security companies are truly effective at reducing the incidences of crime. Some go as far as to say that consumers are using their money on only an illusion of security. Our guests offer interesting insight in response to these views. I think for us we have to approach this issue from two angles. One, do the security companies themselves know what they are supposed to give to the consumers? The services which they do know the product which they are supposed to give to the consumers, right? Do the consumers also know what they are supposed to get from their suppliers? Really, it's, it's, it is an issue of understanding security. If you want a security, what do you want the security for? What sort of security do you want? I think crime is becoming more sophisticated. And maybe you might be right to say, we need to catch up. But there are a few factors that I would like to highlight. Uh, first and foremost, the purpose of engaging in private security is the purpose of deterrence. achieve a complete eradication, it has never happened. And as you may know, Private security here is not professional. And we have to address them. Let me pick, for instance, uh, the issue of uh, risk assessment when you engage a, a private company. Most clients just call a private security company, more premises, I want two guards. They don't engage us before. They don't engage any professional risk assessors to say, Tota for complete coverage. The security The choice of a security company. In most cases, people want to engage a security company that is cheaper. The determining factor is always the price, which is a problem because at the end of the day, if you look at a cheaper product, you are bound to find that you're dealing with a product that is inferior. Most security 
how engage the company ka gore di chip o ithela o engage the company o sa lebelle mabaka mangwe a tshwantse ro a lebella wa lebelle to make sure that you are safe for instance security company should always be 24 hours security ke 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 product e leng gore before you package it and give it to somebody who it is it wants to do like that early guards must come for parade and be inspected or are they fit for duty but you know all those companies that do that but chege madya go dingwa so normally clients would go for 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 that for those that charge less money because what they do is they get guys from the streets not trained and they say that would mean you are going to get an inferior product. Uh, the other area, area of training. Uh, our training is not standard yet. So you find that train like a So as long as we don't have standardized training, we, we're still going to have a, a problem in those things. So those are the issues and factors uh, they contribute to to to, to those factors that we tell you, you can read the book he gets. But I would like to indicate to you that security companies are doing a great job. Uh, of late, uh, other uh, security forces, the public, the government, but it's very important to engage all the time because they realize that we do have intelligence. Ever I talk on. We do have a uh, you know, they can also use us because we are always in the streets and always everywhere. I can assure you how can we draw security companies they will be disaster to show you that there is clearly a lack of understanding of roles. What are we as consumers rightly to expect when we engage the services of a private security company? They are supposed to be, depending on the type of business which you are engaged in, they are supposed to be making sure that there are no loopholes in your, in, your, in your own security, making sure that unauthorized people do not gain access into your premises, or people do not help themselves to your goods if you have, if you have provided securities to, to man your shop, right, inside the shop, so that uh, people don't come in and get goods which, um, which they have not actually paid for. This actually requires now the types of security to say. Most of what our security companies which are providing really is that we should look at the training which they have received. What sort of training do the security companies provide? And all what we have seen now happening is that they do not provide any uh, quality training, right? I, I, I wouldn't say all of them. I'll say some of them do not provide that particular quality training. Uh, quality training meaning that is that the training, if you're told you are providing, somebody is giving you, you have been trained to, to inspect maybe like the, the security guard which you see in the, most of the retail shops. You they know what they are looking for. Right? Can they even they, they, they just look at the tail slip and just you know tick the items as they see them, or maybe if they are supposed to be men in the entrances, do you know? Do they know what they are supposed to look for? I mean, as a something which they, they have to suspect either been stolen or something like that. Major General Mokware is of the view that the local private security industry has serious challenges with regards to both the execution and the regulation of its services. I, I don't want to step on other people's toes, but I, I would just like to give an, an, an honest opinion. So that which uh, I think we need to understand that. Uh, or maybe if I give an, of an example of uh, maybe a medical doctor, you know, operating a liquor restaurant, simply because he has just realized that that is a lucrative business. So I think some people who are in the security business also, they do not understand what is security, but they have happened to open businesses simply because they, I think they think they have seen the need 
that maybe is one way of making money. Yeah, but uh, my advice to a lot of people who are dealing with security is that before you open a security company yourself, you should understand what is security. Does the chairman of the Security Association of Botswana agree with this view? Does he also think that local company owners know little to do with the intricacies of the industry? And if so, what can and is being done to address the situation? I think to some extent one can say yes, it is true. Uh, the biggest problem is that our own security company. You would find that the only requirement is that the fingerprints are already deleted here. And a lot of people out there, Baba is in the industry, Balibella industry is a lucrative industry because they think all you do is get guys, put them there, they wait for a certain period of time, and then you get paid for that. You are right to say, but we have to mind our business, the complexities of the industry. This is getting us, you know, back a bit. We have taken steps to address that. We have come up with a, a new regulation, a new security act. We are trying to address this kind of uh, situation where we tell them that no security is not going to stand up. We are not going to listen to our own corner. How do we understand the security? We are not going to be able to do it. We are not going to be able to do it. We are not going to be able to do it. We are not going to be able to do it. We are not I think it's not right. We people the resources to talk about more security. We have a license to run some more trade. How it's now? Your workers are not insured. You do not have an office. An office is very important in security because time and again, we have to refer to office for 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 you know for response for who we Baba go site in Batoka more 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 support. You know about that safety. So such things should always be in place. Who do so equipment it to run yaka droja roja, the colo it chance to do nothing. But we are seeing situations where but why you are the license, Basa Supabu Koni Bahuri Lutzabaka Kona Udira. And then they go into the business and they fail. And they fail us as well. And then run at the end of the day, Kirunabai Lord Chance or Libahan any same soon as you. I think like you said, it's very important for the most things address we have here. And I hope that uh, the training standards will really I hope that the new act, when it comes in, into effect, it will address those anomalies. By now we can appreciate that our local industry is made inefficient by the challenges laid bare by our commentators this evening. But how do we account for instances in which a country has a sophisticated and well-regulated private security industry and crime levels are still high, like our neighbour South Africa? Sometimes, you know, we cannot compare South Africa and Botswana. Uh, let us look at the types and or the level of uh, uh, crime there and the types of crimes which have been committed in South Africa. South Africa, although they do have quite a large sec uh, private security, but they do have some trainings which they are actually doing. So that is why we find that sometimes the criminals now Instead of just doing the basic, you know, the basic uh, criminal activities, they will go to the most violent ones. And that is what we see there in South Africa now, whereby it is getting very sophisticated rather than in Botswana. In Botswana, yeah, I don't think we are getting that sophisticated criminal activities like which we see in South Africa. To some extent, of course, some activities we find that they've been highly planned. But the ones which we see like criminals just going up, you know, into game city roof. I think those are things which we need to deal with, right? First of all, if we had our security people who have been well trained, first of all, they know when they take any other, they have to inspect patrolling. What are the signs which you might pick, the red flags as you patrol, which you might pick up, you know, something is wrong here. If you are a security guard, you are guarding the premises and people are, are knocking off, you look around, you have, you have to be looking up at the ceiling. And if you see, you see that, okay, maybe this ceiling is not upright, you, you should be, in, be able to investigate it immediately. So, as you train, you, have been, you, you train as a security guard, one of the things which you will be taught is observation. 
right? How do you observe? Okay, what are the red flags as you go around during a patrol which you need to pick? So now for you to show that these guys are not well trained, I mean, they are unable to pick easy things like that. You know, so it is important. Even in, in the morning, as a security guard, when you come into the premises, you are able to shoot that signs which you need to, which should indicate to you that something is wrong. Maybe things had been moved, they are not in the same positions which they are supposed to be on, on which you left them on the previous day. In places like South Africa, crime is actually very high. And it's very high because we see a certain syntagal. But I would say, Mm. Had we, if we didn't have any private security in South Africa, the situation would be quite worse. I can assure you, I've interacted with uh, uh, some, some, some of the leaders of the security industry in South Africa, and I've looked at what they're doing. They're doing quite a great job, and they're really... Definitely, the, the, the country will be in chaos. So I would say they are quite doing a good job. And, it's just that crime is in the industry. The industry is in it's struggling to get up and a hole. So, since the thing is that we have to look at the part of the industry, it's in the middle of the hole. Mr. Mudongo earlier alluded to the role of private security as being a deterrent to criminal activity. What then is his preferred model for how security companies should liaise with the true enforcers, the police? As of late, we are interacting a lot with the police. And we are saying to the police, we are also a police force. We are as good as them. The only difference is that Runa Sirisidira, we do it for a profit. We even better because Runa Runa lead the standards that are trying to achieve as per Ravoli Sidile, Lirit Lines, etc. We are even better again because Runa, we are always on the ground. Reliability CMO, how to turn the by the retreat to the offices and only respond when they are called to do so. So we are saying we should be in direct contact. We to read other ways of We give examples here about the banking. The banking is not have security, but we have special treatment. We have to post that in the So we have to in the Territorially security companies just like members of the public. We've even said, let's hold joint training and joint, you know, operations together. We've given instances where my participants in resources, because in most cases, every street we tell a security package. It's also in their, our interest uh, we The issues like uh, crime, we tell security we get the first all the time by virtue of the fact that we're always on the ground. Me, as we get there first, we return to Ridididire. Me, if my police worker is out there, Ridididire, through joint training, you know, there, there would be better ways of solving these uh, uh, criminal issues. Sikai, we have to say that crime scene, we have to talk about the crime so we need to give each other feedback and they understand the whole you know how an alarm works and then Libonet they should come to us have us now how do these criminals beat our alarms so that's the kind of model we want to, to, to have with the police we share all the time and work very closely having explored what continues to be a challenging area for consumers we next get some good news for the end user in the form of a technological advancement that was recently launched in the country and is sure to increase the ease with which we access our banking services. 
Welcome back to First Issues. Do you remember what cell phones looked like back in the 90s? Huge bricks with black and grey displays that could only make calls and send simple SMSs. Now we have slick devices, often with not even one button, that do things we could not have imagined just a short while ago. Phones are now personal assistants, synchronizing your calendar and appointments with your other devices, providing research and facts from an immeasurable database, taking dictated notes, paying bills and sending money, and now they provide one-touch banking solutions on the go. We were at the launch of the FNB mobile app last Friday to find out whether indeed the smartphone could have been made smarter and to determine which aspects of the application have made it one of the most downloaded in South Africa where it was first launched. How Hakwe Mokobi clues us in. We realized that uh, we needed to bring in more channels for customers to be able to do transactions on their mobile phones. So FNB.app, FNB app is another way that customers can do their transfers, they can do payments, they can also do what we call geopayments, which is a way to pay somebody from one cell phone to another. Then there's also the ATM locator, ATM or branch locator, where if you're in an area and you don't know where our ATMs are, you can actually look for them through the ATM locator. You're also able to make calls on the app. You're also able to send SMSs on the app. Fantastic. Who can use this app? Well, anybody really. Um, even non-FMB customers, non-FMB users can use the, the app. It's just that for non-FMB users, they are restricted to locating ATMs and making e-wallet payments. How secure is this? How secure are my transactions using this application? As a bank, you, you would you'd imagine that we're we are quite strict about security. So using the app, once you've downloaded the app, then you must link it to your online profile, which now says to you that you need to have your online profile fully active. Okay? And once you've linked it to your online profile, then every time you want to use the app, you have to use your online password. So that checks that this is the right person that should be using this app. You can continue to depend on us to bring you both the best and the worst cases of consumer care. From me, Nametsu Sibina, the team behind First Issues, and our sponsors, First National Bank, we wish you a good night and pleasant viewing.